I'm Pastor Grace. And I'm Chaplain Tony. And this is Scrolling, Scrolling Through the scriptures. scriptures. And let's say that one more time. Scrolling, Scrolling through, through the scriptures. scriptures. Oh my, I think I need more coffee. <laughs> I've got my Diet Coke. Okay. Um, Tony, I think after that start, would you please start us with prayer? I'll give it a good shot. Bow with us if you would. Holy Father, we thank you so much that we are able to take this time out of our busy schedules and spend it with you. That we are able to open our minds and our hearts and forget all worldly things and be with you as you open our minds, open our spirits, and meet with us each where we are at. Use your Holy Spirit to come and be with us and teach us the joy and the sorrow and help us to understand what your scriptures have to share with us this day. We ask this in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, that was some storm we had last night in the Florida Delphi region. Uh, this is August 10th, I believe. No, Sunday was the, the 9th, so this is the 11th of August. And, uh, but we had some tree limbs down in the yard and around and power out in places. Uh, there was a special name to that storm that came through. I can't think of it right now. Dreco. Yeah. Where there was lots of several mini storms and all of that, just a broad band of them coming yeah. from Illinois over. But they were very powerful storms. Exactly. Very powerful storms, and they should have stopped them at the state line. But they didn't. Well, I don't know why the state troopers weren't out there stopping them at the state line. But there were straight line winds of up to 100 miles an hour Yes, in some of these storms. And I, as I was scrolling, Facebook showed like roofs totally off of the rafters, just whoosh. And I have not even looked at the news today to see what happened in Chicago, because they were talking about tornadoes in Chicago. Well, I missed that. So as to how that went over. So there are people hurting as yes. a result. I just can't imagine in downtown Chicago. I mean, it's a windy city, but you don't think about tornadoes in large populated cities. Mm -hmm. It's out in the plains. Mm -hmm. when Small you think cities. Of, when you think of Chicago, it already suffers from those heavy straight line winds just because of the height of right. the buildings. And mm -hmm. so combine those with a, a tornado, oh my goodness, that must be very powerful. Well, speaking of powerful storms, we are about to have one in, Abra in Abraham's family, in uh, Isaac's, let me get it right, Jacob's family. Yes. The grandson of Abraham. In Jacob's family with his daughter Dinah, uh, who is the daughter of Leah, his wife yes. Leah, um, the less loved wife. So we are on chapter 34. We don't know her age, but she is of an age that she w was out and visiting other women, other families in the community. So at least upper teens, early 20s, I would guess. Possibly, yes, very possibly. She was of maritable age. Yes. She was of marrying age. So uh, let's proceed to chapter 34, and I'll get our sounds going here. Give me just a minute. Do I have that right? No. Dinah, the 
daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father, Hamor, Get me this young woman as a wife. Okay, there is no other way that this can be interpreted other than she was raped. Yes. She was out visiting other women in the community in the area of Shechem. Now, to keep from being too terribly confused, the city-state is named Shechem, and the prince of the city is named after the city-state. Yes. So he is Shechem. The area is Shechem, and he is Shechem. Yes. And his father, who is king over the city-state, is named Hamor. Yes. All right. Uh, also, I just, in some readings I was doing, um, this morning, Hamor was uh, what part of the the clan that um, Abraham bought land from oh. to bury Sarah. That's an interesting. Yes, more so. Yes. Uh, so anyway, so this is part of that family um and there are two levels as we listen to this there is the family the familial level happening and there's also that more tribal level that goes on okay say more okay well we have the father coming to jacob and saying my son loves your daughter my son raped your daughter and now has fallen in love with her and so he would like to take her as a bride and so here is the family level where the two fathers work it out and say okay let's settle it this way there'll be a bride what a dowry bride yeah. price and you know this wasn't a good thing a good thing to have happen but this is what they agree on father to father yeah and we'll see that coming yeah. up but then there's a different solution that comes along with all of the sons yes with all of dinah's brothers both her brothers that are of the same mother as leah mm -hmm. her full brothers plus all of her half brothers yes all of the sons of tribe to tribe of jacob yes yes oh it is going to be a storm so let us continue there at verse 5. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them. The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters to yourselves so you shall dwell with us and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me I will give, 
Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. Whose voice do we not hear? Dinah. Dinah is not heard. Leah is not heard. And that would have been the way of things yes. in that time. Yes. I mean, we have heard in the past, Rachel was, uh, Rebecca was asked, will you go with Isaac? Will you go with the servant of Abraham to be the wife of Isaac? And that was astounding that she was asked. That she was, exactly. But here we have neither Dinah being asked, and we have neither her mother being consulted. Rebecca's mother was consulted. I mean, she stepped up and said, you know, and spoke her piece, Laban's, uh, well, Laban was the, the brother to Rebecca, but they spoke their, the mother spoke their, her piece, and, but we do not hear anything from the women. This is all the men, mm -hmm. you know, um, being very, we're going to take care of this. Yes. And so we don't know what Dinah thinks about all of this. Yes. She has been violated. She has been raped. And now she is being offered up to, to the person who raped her to be his wife. Yes. And they're making a bargain for her. I wouldn't be want to wear be, want to be wearing her shoes. I I wouldn't want to be sleeping. I wouldn't want to be closing my eyes with her anywhere around if she's got sharp high heel shoes. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Well, You better not be sleeping too soundly around me if you raped me and then said I had to marry you. If you didn't have the high heeled shoes, you might grab a tent peg. I'd grab a tent peg, I'd grab something. Yeah. Just think you're going to sleep good. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he had defiled Dinah, their sister. We cannot do this thing, to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition, we will consent to you. If you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. So the young man did not delay to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men Here's of their the city. Here's the tribal. Mm -hmm. These men are at peace with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade in it. For indeed, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us to be one people. If every male among us is circumcised, as they are circumcised, will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of his city heeded Hamor and Shechem, his son. Every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of his city. So here is what Hamor and Shechem said to the men of the city. They're in the city gate where, and we've talked before how that is kind of like where the main business ha happens, mm -hmm. where any trading of land or any big deals are made is in the city gates. 
And so it's Jacob and his family and his tribe have wealth. Mm -hmm. They have lots of possessions. They have lots of animals, flocks, herds, lots of servants and all this sort of stuff. And that wealth could be ours. All we have to do is be willing to be circumcised. We'll be in pain for a few days and then we will gradually take all of their wealth and it will come into our households by marrying in and will all absorb into ours. And then they will be no more. We will just take it all over. Wishful thinking. Now then, what the sons of Jacob have said and what Jacob is thinking is that you will be circumcised. And in Jacob's mind is, okay, circumcision is the outward sign of acceptance of the covenant of Abraham with God. That God would be their God and that they would be a people of one God, the true God, and would live by God's laws. Yes. And so he is seeing this as they're going to be a covenant people with them. And Dinah would be the bride of Shechem. Of Shechem. And this would all be godly people together, and they would give up their idols and all of this, and would be a godly people together, and would repent, and would be circumcised, and all would be well. Yes. Jacob has heard that, you know, the stories about how God has promised all of the land of Canaan and, and going outward, all of this property was going to be given to Abraham and to Isaac and now to Jacob. Mm -hmm. And here he has this, the, the area of Shechem, the city-state of Shechem, saying, we'll make this treaty with you. How much was going on in Jacob's mind of, this is how God is handing this over to us, mm -hmm. is by treaties. This is fulfillment of the prophecy. Yes, this is fulfillment of God's promise. The prophecy and the promise that we will have all of this is little, by conversion. Yeah, little does he know. It's by conversion. That that is not what his sons have in mind. Nor does he realize that that's not what Shechem has in mind. Yeah. Hamor or Shechem have in mind. I mean, Jacob has no sense in his mind that, oh, it's going to be, for, you know, all these years later, and then it's going to be through fighting and turmoil that they're going to receive the land. No, it's like, this is a horrible thing that has happened to my daughter, but... Through this, God is going to use this for a treaty, and all these people are going to convert yeah. from paganism to living a godly life. So let's see what happens. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city, and what was in the field, and all their wealth. All their little ones and their wives they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. 
and since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. Should he treat our sister like a harlot? Jacob awakens to find out that two of his sons have led their servants, their people, uh, Simeon and Levi have led their people into a slaughter of the entire city-state area, the entire region of Shechem, and have killed all the men. Killed Hamor as, as the king and Shechem as the prince, and has killed them all and taken the children and the women and all the plunder for themselves. And so Jacob is now looking at, you had this entire region with the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Hivites, uh, all of that region is going to say, you can't make treaties with these people because they'll go up against the treaty. They can't be trusted. We better just now line up against them or else. Jacob is very afraid of what's going to happen next. Because now they will need to revenge those that were killed. Yes. Yes. There are four points that wanted to bring out about in all of this. One is that the promised land was not theirs yet. They were just passing through. It was not theirs to have and to hold yet. Second was that although Simeon and Levi, although the sons had jeopardized the promise, God in his mercy is still going to give the land to Israel. And we see that as we go through uh, into Exodus and then farther on. We will see that God fulfills his promise to give the land to the descendants of Jacob, uh, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it is through his mercy, not through the perfect actions of Jacob and Jacob's sons. Third, this is a warning to Israel not to make treaties or to intermarry with the Canaanites. Or any of the ites. Any of the ites. It's not one that they heed for very long, but it is a warning of them not to do this. And fourth, it is showing us that neither Simeon nor Levi are worthy to be the royal tribe from which the Messiah would come. Uh, that uh, now Reuben is the firstborn, then Simeon, and then Levi. So Simeon and Levi are kicked out of the running to be the royal tribe. So we still have Reuben as the firstborn, um, as being able to be the, the lineage for the Messiah to come through. But wow. All that. All of that in one chapter. Um, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with you. And I hope you enjoyed that quick break and got something to refresh your coffee or your, your caffeine of choice. We are on chapter 35 now, and so uh, Dinah has been avenged, and the brothers uh, felt like they have done what they uh, were supposed to do, but now Jacob must leave the area. He must take his entire family and leave the area. So here we are on chapter 35. And God said, yes. Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, 
and dwell there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. And Jacob said to his household, and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree, which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built an altar there, and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alan Bacoth. Then God appeared to Jacob again, when he came from Paden Era and blessed him. Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, I give to you, and to your descendants after you, I give this land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. So God has reiterated, has given emphasis once again to that Jacob is no longer Jacob, which meant supplanter, a deceiver, but is Israel. Yes. Uh, and so has a new name, has a new purpose, and is driving that home once again. And I am your God, and you are you are mine, and I am your your God. Um, and this place of Bethel, which is the house of God. Um, and El Bethel is God of the house of God. Um, so having your name changed was pretty significant yes. in that culture. Baptism not by fire, but baptism by a new name. Baptism by a new name. Now, not everyone's name was changed by God, but when God changes your name, it's changed. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Do you know that old hymn? No, I do not. And a white robed angel sing the story, a sinner has come home. bum ba da ba ba, -ba. I do not know that one. I have to dig out the old hymnal. All right. Then they journeyed from Bethel. And when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Now it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said to her, Do not fear. You will have this son also. And so it was, 
as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Onai, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. significant about those two names, Ben-Anai and Benjamin? Ben-Onai, son of my sorrow. Son of my sorrow. And that was her dying breath, naming her dying him that. Breath. And so when Jacob said, no, let's name him something else. Son of my right hand is Benjamin. Benjamin, okay. Son, son of, of my, my right hand. So he kept then Benjamin close by him. Yes. So Joseph was his favorite because it was Rachel's firstborn, but then Benjamin is going to stick right by his side. Yes. Sad intent. Okay. Something to keep. Mm -hmm. Little fat to keep tucked away for later. Because that will totally affect Benjamin's Benjamin's life and the way um, his father makes decisions for him and about him regarding the entire family. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Now, there's a very short paragraph here in verses 21-22 that has some significance. Israel journey and pitched his tent beyond the Tower of Eden. And it happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard about it. Now, first off, I don't think that child was very smart. No. To lay with his father's concubine was the same thing as saying, I'm taking over dad's place. Uh, remember when, well, that's Still later. like thumbing your nose at your father. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And we'll see that later on uh, with uh, one of, after Saul dies, one of his uh, commanders of his army is accused of laying with one of Saul's concubines. Yes. And um, he doesn't even dignify that with a response, but he is accused of it. Um, but, here he's he, but here it is, Reuben, who is the firstborn, who should have been the one from whom the promise would have come through for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But now, Reuben has done this, has tried to usurp his father's authority, so he is out of the running. Right. So the first three, Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, are out of the running for to be the royal tribe from which the Messiah will come. So that leaves the fourth tribe, which is the tribe of... I don't remember. Judah. Judah. The Lion of Judah. The, Lion the tribe of Judah. of Judah is the fourth tribe. Um, but just in that short little thing is that he went to pitch his tent beyond the Tower of Ader and it happened that Reuben messed up bad. Now it doesn't mean that Judah or the others are perfect, but we've had these three that have really shown themselves to be unworthy. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maidservant, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's maidservant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Paden Aram. 
Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kirjath Arba, that is, Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. So Isaac breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And so then going back into this place brought him back to where Eden and the or Edom and his Edom and his family. Esau. Esau, thank you. Yeah, to where Esau and his family are. And so they are the two brothers are reunited and so Isaac We've not heard anything about Isaac. Uh, we knew that Isaac was on his deathbed, but 20 some odd years has passed and he's had, well, lot more than that. 30 or 40 years yeah. have passed because he served 20 years and has had 12 children. Yeah. And now here we are, he is home. And his father has died. Um, now then, chapter 36. We're going to cl close out today with chapter 36. A lot of names. A lot of names. Um, and I... Names are kind of hard to to read out of the Old Testament, and I think Michael York does a fantastic job. He's a wonderful, wonderful actor, and he does a fantastic job of reading all of these names and pronouncing them yeah. and, you know, enunciating them. He's just, just wonderful, and so you just know he's saying them correctly. Positively. Absolutely, positively, he's saying them correctly. If he's not, who would know the difference, but he does such a great job. Um, for me, hearing all the names, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again every time there's a list of names, is the importance is where I grew up with a large family, I was a part of the family. You're one of this family. You know, I was recognized as being one of, you know, the Hammer children. And so... Seeing the oh, list of you're names. One of Arthur's kids. Yeah, one of AB's. AB's. One of AB's, AB's children. AB's children. One of Opal's children, yes. Um, so, seeing the names made me realize God sees individuals. And so He sees me as an individual. He doesn't just see a cluster of people, but he sees me and knows me. And so that to me was very important in my teenage years growing up was that I realized that he sees me. So I love it when they come to list of names. It's still just as tedious and maybe a little hard to get through, but it's important to me. But this serves a couple of purposes. And so as you're listening to this, I want you to realize a couple of things here. One is that this list of names and the kings and the chiefs and all of this, it shows the, that God's promise that Esau's would be a nation, that Esau's descendants would be a nation was fulfilled. They were not forgotten. It was fulfilled that they would be a nation. Now Esau is later known as Edom and become the Edomites, which is a large nation south of uh, the land of Israel, of the, the land that Israel takes. Um, what is now in our timeline where we are right now of the Canaanites. Now the Edomites have kings long before uh, the Israelites have kings. 
but by the eighth king, by King Jehoshaphat uh, of Israel, there are no more kings of the Edomites because they were pagan worshipers by that point. Uh, but anyway, this is a strong showing of where some of the people came from of the uh, Edomites um, and but it shows that God's promise that Esau would be a nation is fulfilled. Um, and it shows you, um, you'll see the listing of the Amalekites, which comes up in Judges chapter 6. And so that's because they are a problem people in uh, later on for Israel uh, there. Um, just as a comparison, we had this long listing of Ishmael after we had the listing of Jacob and we had a listing of the 12 princes that came from through Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And so it was showing that the fulfillment of Ishmael being a great nation. Mm -hmm. Now Esau was not told he would be a great nation, but that it would be a nation. Ishmael would be a great nation mm -hmm. and was. And so and, of course, Ishmael comes back up again here in a couple more chapters. Uh, we'll get to that next week when we see Ishmael's descendants come back forward. So as you listen to 36, remember this is, is it's more than just a listing of names. It is the promise of the fulfillment of God's promise to Esau. Now this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elan, the Hittite, Aholibema, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Basimath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nabajath. Now Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basimath bore Ruan, and Aholibema bore Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, and all his goods which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob. For their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. And the land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And this is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. These were the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Adar the wife of Esau, and Ruel, the son of Basimath, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Now Timna was the concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zira, Shama, and Miza. These were the sons of Basimath, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Aholibema, Esau's wife, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion. And she bore to Esau Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, were Chief Teman, Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenaz, Chief Korah, Chief Gatam, and Chief Amalek. These were the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. They were the sons of Ada. These were the sons of Ruel. Esau's son, Chief Nahath, Chief Zira, Chief Shama, 
and Chief Mizar. These were the chiefs of Ruel in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Basimath, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aholibema, Esau's wife. Chief Jeush, Chief Jeolam, and Chief Korah. These were the chiefs who descended from Aholibema, Esau's wife, the daughter of Ana. These were the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land. Lotan, Shoba, Zibion, Ana, Daishan, Ezer, and Daishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir, in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Horai and Hema. Lotan's sister was Timna. These were the sons of Shoba. Alvin, Manahath, Ebel, Shifo, and Onan. These were the sons of Zibion, both Aja and Ana. This was the Ana who found the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father Zibion. These were the children of Ana, Daishon and Aholibema, the daughter of Ana. These were the sons of Daishan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Kiran. These were the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zevan, and Achan. These were the sons of Daishan, Az, and Aram. These were the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shoba, Chief Zibion, Chief Ena, Chief Daishan, Chief Ezer, and Chief Daishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites, according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. Now these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinabah. And when Bela died, Jobab, the son of Zerah of Basra, reigned in his place. When Jobab died, Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. And when Husham died, Hadad, the son of Bedad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place, and the name of his city was Avith. When Hadad died, Samla of Masrika reigned in his place, and when Samla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. When Saul died, baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place. And when Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, died, Hadar reigned in his place, and the name of his city was Peu. His wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. And these were the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their families and their places, by their names Chief Timna, Chief Alva, Chief Jetheth. Chief Aholibema, Chief Ila, Chief Painan, Chief Kinaz, Chief Timan, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdiel, and Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Esau was the father of the Edomites. Take a breath. Well, a lot of chiefs, a lot of the same names being said over in different ways um, as just their names, as the son and the daughter of, the son of. 
But like I said, all of that to show you who they were and how they linked in with. And yes. And that Esau did become a nation. God keeps his promises. Yes. Even though it's not going to be a mainline, you know, key player in uh, the salvation of the world, promises kept. Yes. <sighs> so next week, we get into um, Joseph. No. Yeah. Well, not quite yet. We still have uh, some more of Jacob. Well, Chapter Joseph, 37. Joseph is in there a little bit. Yeah, well, let's don't get too far into Joseph yet. Joseph. He's the excitement part. Mm. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's Bible study. And will join us again next week as we start on chapter 37 of Genesis. I hope they were more interested than Asta. Oh. Asta is laying there sound asleep. Comatose. With his tongue hanging out. Yes. Hopefully you are more yeah. awake. Yeah. Hopefully you're not laying there on your side with your tongue sticking out asleep. Let us close our time together in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for all that you have given us through your word. So much history, so many stories that we can learn from that the mighty people that you used were not perfect and neither are we and you will still use us just as you use them to make mighty things happen lord we ask that you would use us make us your servants make us into disciples that can be used to bring others into a knowledge that Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and he is the only one who can bring us salvation that he is your one and only begotten Son and that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life Lord, we thank you for this time that you have given us to be together. And we, Lord, we thank you that if it is your will that we would be able to come back together again next week. For it is in Jesus' holiest of names we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have any questions or comments, please just send a note to one of the churches or call one of the churches whose names and address is on the bottom of the screen. And we'll be happy to respond. So long.